Yep, you'll want to take off your mask. Yeah. You're comfortable okay. doing so. Yes. If you want to bring the mic down, you may. A little bit. Okay. okay. And I think I can read it without glasses. That was my big question. Sure. <laughs> so. For a microphone in a church setting is, I think you're going to slow. Mm. <laughs> okay. It takes a little while for the yes. sound to travel. Okay. And no one else has the written text of the petitions. Okay. So, um, you'll want to go nice and close so everyone can hear what you're saying. There's okay. no problem. Okay. So, Perfect. you're going to say your lines, mm -hmm. and then when you get to we pray, mm -hmm. the church will respond to mercy of God, hear our prayer. When we respond, then you peel off and go behind go to the, the back. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. No problem. Then when Shaquille rotates back, you come up. I'm all, I, you might want to raise the microphone because you're taller than Shaquille. Okay. Is. Good point. Yeah. I, I would recommend about this distance from the microphone. Okay. Perfect. Um, then you're going to read here. And yes. Then, uh, the rule of thumb in a church study is if you think you're going too slow, go, go slower. slower. Okay. Because right? it takes a while for the sound to carry. So That's go nice and slow. You have one of the longer petitions. Yes. So just go nice and slow. There's no rush. You're going to say, we pray. Hi, Chris. It's great to have you with us. Thanks so much for being here. I'm just walking people through the petition. So this is, you have great timing. You're the second to last. So I'll yes. get to you in just a second. Thanks so much, Chris. So you're going to say, we pray. We're going to respond, merciful God, hear our prayer. Okay. After we respond, then you go behind Shaquille. Perfect. And you just hold that position. So rise and respond in. Then, then you go back. Perfect. Because so. technically when we say, merciful God, hear our prayer, we're, we're merging our prayer with yours. Okay. So don't peel off too early. Sounds good. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Alex. All right. So, uh, all right. So, after we say, merciful God, hear our prayer, and Alex peels off, then you approach the microphone. You can bring the mic down. Yeah. You want to be about eight inches or so. Come on. Come on. Okay. Because this is a large space, a good rule of thumb is if you think you're going to slow, you're the only person with the text. So there's no rush. You want to go nice and slow so everyone can hear you. Uh, sometimes when we're nervous, we speak up and speed up. Yeah. You know? So I would just go nice and slow. And then when you say we pray, we're going to respond, merciful God, hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. When we finish our response, then you're going to peel back and you'll go behind that. So I stand here while you respond. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And then you'll peel back behind that. Okay. And I say it's like we pray to the Lord. Is that we what I'm saying? We just say we pray. Oh, we just. That's all you say is okay. we pray. Okay. And then it would be a good idea to take off your mask just so we can okay. hear you. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Noel. Tania. Yes. All right. So Tania, mm -hmm. when we are finished saying merciful God, hear our prayer. Noel is going to peel to the back of the line, and then you come up. You're the only person who has the text in front of you, so go nice and slow. And if you think you're going too slow, go slow. Really, it takes a lot of time for the sound to carry through this church space. So there's no rush. We really took a lot of time writing these petitions and we want people to savor them. So go nice and slow. You're going to say, we pray, we're going to respond, versus who God hear our prayer. When, when we're done with our response, then you feel up and you go behind the wall. Okay. Okay? You're a little bit taller than Noel, so you might want to bring the microphone up. Yeah. I would recommend about eight inches. Okay. Just as you can bring the microphone so your knees don't pop. Um, and uh, you will want to take off your mask so we can hear you nice and clearly. Okay. Um, so we don't stick out our hands or anything. Uh, if you want to, you can go okay. to the person who can be afraid, but uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi, Micah. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Okay, so when people... and slow. Then at the end, you're going to say, we pray. Okay. We're going to respond. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Yeah. And you stay here the whole time.
This is the key part. So you want to get this side. So that's the most important thing you want in front of the camera. So just go behind the camera.
It is our pleasure to welcome you all this afternoon to come for this missioning mass. To celebrate the beginning of Dr. Hanish, her ministry as president of Xavier University. To pray for her and for all the members of our community. Today we give thanks for the opportunity to gather together in person as well as via live stream so that we can unite our minds and our hearts, our souls and our voices across campus and the country. As an academic community, we hold many celebrations to honor accomplishments of our students, our faculty and staff. Everything that we do is animated in our Jesuit Catholic identity and mission. For this reason, we are here today to ask the Spirit of God to not only bless Dr. Hamish in her ministry as president, but also to inspire us all to embrace this new chapter in this great history of our university by sharing the gifts we each bring. As a member of the staff advisory committee and the staff as a whole, we look forward to her leadership as she guides Xavier University through the next phase of its history. Congratulations on becoming president of my alma mater. Personally, as a nurse, a faculty member, a doctoral student, and soon to be alum, I would like to thank the board, the committee members, the trustees for hiring our very first female president. I look forward to her wisdom, her leadership, as well as her support for our outstanding and ever-growing College of Nursing. We gather as a diverse community, each of us with our own beliefs and experiences. Our diversity, united by the Jesuit traditions, strengthens our ability to shape our students intellectually, morally, and spiritually enhances our ability to seek God in all things and challenges us to cultivate ever more inclusive and robust solidarity on and beyond campus. This liturgy is a time to seek guidance, find support, and celebrate the relationships that help shape who we are individually and collectively. We are delighted to be joined by partners, friends, neighbors, and leaders from our community and around the country in this service today. Your presence helps us to keep a healthy perspective on our roles in and responsibilities to the church, the university, and the society. We invite you now to prepare your hearts for this celebration. We pray rooted in our Jesuit Catholic identity and we ask you to bring your whole self to this place so we might unite in our diversity by our shared mission to encourage, to educate, to empower. Unity is not the same as uniformity. So while we hope to pray in a way that extends God's welcome to all, we invite you to reflect and to look for the residents as you feel comfortable in our time together this afternoon. Thank you for being here. You help us embody the many and diverse blessings that come from God, who loves each and all infinitely and unconditionally, and who calls us into community so we can love and serve one another. And now we invite you to please stand and join us in singing our opening song, Be Thou My Vision.
We are so excited to be here, and so we hope that we worship with that kind of energy because truly it is a blessing to gather in this place. I'm Abby King Kaiser. I'm the director of the Center for Faith and Justice. I am here particularly to welcome our presider, Father Carl Kaiser, who is the provincial of the Midwestern Jesuits. We are so grateful that he could join us not just for tomorrow's activities, but to share the wisdom of his ministry with us today as the presider and through his homily. And so we are grateful that he will lead us in worship this afternoon. I like your last name, by the way, Abby. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. We gather here today to represent all of Xavier for the great celebration as we prepare to inaugurate our president, Dr. Hanich. We welcome Dr. Hanich, her husband, students, faculty, staff, alumni, board members, all the people who love Xavier. Welcome here today. Oftentimes when we gather in groups like this, there are many people from other faith traditions here, and I always like to make sure everybody feels comfortable. So first of all, everybody should feel comfortable. We welcome everyone. Um, I'm probably the one who's the least comfortable. Um, but when Catholics pray, let me just say a couple things. When Catholics pray together, we stand. So when I say let us pray, sometimes people say, when I do a Catholic church, they're up and down. What are they doing? Let me tell you what they're doing. We stand when we pray together. I'll let you know if you, if you seem to miss a cue. We, when we pray together, we always stand for the precious words of Jesus Christ. And those words are, are preceded by an alleluia that lets us know the good news is about to be proclaimed. So we'll stand. There's lots of scripture. There's three readings we'll do. Um, a reading from the Hebrew scriptures, a reading from the New Testament, and a gospel. And we'll sing a psalm as well from the, from the Hebrew scriptures. At the time of communion, this is the most sacred part of a service for Roman Catholics. We believe this is Jesus Christ present in the bread and wine, his body and blood truly present. We know that there are many who don't believe that, and that's okay. We're still really glad you're here. No one's going to be forced to do something they don't believe. But we want you to participate. So if, you would, if you're not Catholic and don't believe what we believe, just come forward, make some gesture, and the person giving communion will say, God bless you, some little blessing, to let you know that you're part of this great celebration as well. Okay? So we gather here today, and we ask God's presence among us, and we ask God to be with us and bless us, and to bless the Xavier community. We also ask God to call us to goodness, and to call us to hope. As we prepare to be with God in the most intimate way through his word proclaimed and through the sacrament, let us call to mind anything in our hearts for which we need to be forgiven and ask God for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory to bring salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who through your servant, St. Francis Xavier, your priest, enabled the gospel to be proclaimed to people even at the ends of the earth. Grant us also by his intercession that preferring nothing else to the love of Christ, we may hasten to where the Spirit wills to lead us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Dr. Hanich, uh, greetings from the Jewish people in their traditional Hebrew, Mazel Tov, which r roughly translated means go get them. <laughs> A reading from the Hebrew scriptures from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me. He took me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many of them spread over the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, O mortal, 
can these bones live again? I replied, O Lord God, only you know. And he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live again. I will lay sinews upon you and cover you with flesh and form skin over you. And I will put breath into you and you shall live again. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been commanded. And while I was prophesying, suddenly there was a sound of rattling. And the bones came together, bone to matching bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had grown, and skin had formed over them, and there was but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, O mortal. Say to the breath, Thus said the Lord God, Come, O breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, they, that they may live again. I prophesied as he commanded me, The breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast multitude. And he said to me, O mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are doomed. Prophesy, therefore, and say to them, Thus said the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and lift you out of the graves, O my people, and bring you to the land of Israel. You shall know, O my people, that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves and lifted you out of your graves. I will put my breath into you, and you shall live again, and I will set you upon your own soil. Then you shall know that the Lord have spoken, and that I, the Lord, have spoken and have acted, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord.
Good afternoon. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, he ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ so that we may no longer be infants tossed by waves and swept along by every wind of teaching arising from human trickery, from their cunning and the interest of deceitful scheming. Rather, living the truth in love, we should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, with the proper functioning of every part, brings about the body's growth and build itself up in love. The word of the Lord. where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently upon him. He said to them, Today, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. My sisters and brothers, for our salvation, the gospel of the Lord.
in the Catholic rite, there's many, there's a lot of ritual, and some people say, well, what does all that mean? Sometimes it's just getting people from A to B, just so you know. As I was thinking about this day and the inauguration of our, Dr. Hanich and the readings, um, we talked a little bit on the, on the committee about what readings would use, and I love that reading that Rabbi read so well from Ezekiel about the dry bones and they're sort of coming to life. It made me recall when I was in college as an undergraduate, one of my roommates uh, was studying pre-med. And he would come home and talk about his anatomy and physiology class. And we used to say, all right, what's the interesting moment from Rich tonight? Because he would always tell us something really amazing about the human body. I studied economics and political science. Political theory is not nearly as interesting as, as uh, uh, the human anatomy and physiology. But he would always say, gosh, you know what I read today? Or you know what I learned today? And we'd all say, oh, that's really interesting. That's really cool, you know? Um, and as he talked about that, you could kind of see his excitement about learning. You could see what was happening to him. And his, his excitement was almost infectious to us. That's the role that a university plays to teach and to get people motivated to learn about the world, to be prepared for what comes next for a future. But a school like Xavier, there's another motive there. And the motive is this. To call, to call people, people to, to beauty. beauty. When, my when my roommate Rich would talk about the human body, it was always, it was always the what's the great moment for Rich? We were always, oh, that's really cool. This is, this is what, what we, we do. We teach here for sure. And we and research, and we publish. But we're trying to teach beauty. The beauty of the human person, the beauty of creation, the beauty of theory, that tries to explain things, the beauty of humanity, the beauty of diversity, the beauty of the way God creates a culture that are different and so amazing, we should all stand back and be in awe every day. Catholics like to kneel sometimes. I think we should always kneel. When we hear and see and learn, we should kneel in awe of the beauty of creation. But our, but our role, role as, a, as a Jesuit university goes even beyond that. It's not just the beauty that has us in awe of what God created. It has us in awe because the beauty gets more beautiful when we urge and see us helping and responding to those around us. Around us. There's nothing more beautiful when someone says, this is God's creation, this is the people of God, and this is where the people of God is broken, hurting in some way, and I want to respond. A Jesuit university wants to teach beauty in addition to teaching stuff, and wants us to teach what it's like when someone sees that someone else's life, maybe even the world itself, the physical world, has a claim on us, and we respond to it and say, ah, I'll go. When you hear young people respond, that is beautiful, and that is what Xavier tries to do, to teach for sure, to teach beauty, to have our students be in awe, and to teach them how beautiful it is when someone says, the lives of others, especially those who suffer, have a claim on my life, and I want to be part of healing, helping, reconciling, loving, however, which, whatever words you wish to push on, put on it. At a Jesuit university, we also do something else. Something that comes right from St. Ignatius himself. We always want to take what Ignatius calls a contemplation of place. What's the context of what we're doing? Because contexts change from time to time to time. And if we're going to, be, uh, if we're going to do a good job at teaching or preaching, we have to understand where we're coming from and what does the world call us to today? Back in, uh, I think it was 2016, the Jesuit uh, uh, gathered in Rome for the, their general congregation, and they took a contemplation of place there. And after looking at the world, they said, you know what, we really need to do our mission, always the same, it's about the gospel, the good news, hope, but now we need to try to reconcile. They said we should be reconciling ourselves with God, humanity, and creation.
This is what they've called the Jesuits to do in Jesuit-sponsored works, to be reconcilers. As we look today and find the contemplation of our place, we encounter ourselves in a world that's tremendously broken. It's broken in many ways, divided politically, theologically, ready to fight at any moment. We see a world that by now we kind of, I don't know about you, but I'm stunned that we still have so much hatred in our world. And we see a world that we're damaging, our very possibility of existence. That's our context. And it's in that context that a place like Xavier is going to start looking different today, because this is the context of Xavier today. And it's in that context where I think these readings today make so much sense. That first reading is so visual. Dry, dead bones. Oh, how dry they are. It's dead. There's not a lot of hope there. That's the point. The word, it's hopeless. And God says to Ezekiel, say the words. Say the words from me about mercy, love. Say the words that you're special. Say those words and let people hear it in the ways they need to hear it. And the dryness comes to life. And all of a sudden, there's hope again. This is what we're called to do today in our context. At Xavier today is to look around and say there's a lot of hopelessness. Someone asked me a couple weeks ago, Father, do we still believe in hell? And I said, have you been around the hopelessness that people feel, the isolation people feel. I said, we can see hell more now than we ever could before. It's, this is what this reading says. Today we're called to be people of hope, to preach the words of love, that God's people are sacred, all of them. Nothing can take the sacredness of life away. To preach that, to preach hope, that's what we're called to do today. And we're going to do it in a special way. This is, you may know, the 500th anniversary of the conversion of St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, best friends with Francis Xavier. <laughs> All around the world, Jesuit institutions are saying, tell your story, your cannonball story. Ignatius was wounded by a cannonball, he had time to reflect, and it changed the course of his life. What's your cannonball story? And so a lot of people are saying, what's the story of my life? What has happened to me that's made me think differently? Xavier today has a cannonball. It's Colleen Hanich, Dr. Hanich, sorry. <laughs> because she comes at a time when Xavier is in a big transition. Xavier is used to having a Jesuit talk and be president. Now we have someone new who's not a Jesuit, first lay person, first lay woman. And we should embrace this because this, she is going to show us how to think differently how to see the world in a new way, ways that we haven't contemplated yet. Totally, I know that she's committed to the mission, but she'll see it different than a judge or a priest would. Hopefully, we're all going to say, ah, there's other ways to live Xavier. There's other ways to see the world. And so we're grateful. When I uh, talk to people about what Colleen is known, Dr. Hanish, sorry, 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 um, is known for, <laughs> um, people said, you know, she's all about mission, all about the students all about working together with others to create a community. She'll show us what to do in this contemplation of place today. She'll bring her voice, which is different than voices past, and allow Xavier to pause and say, what's new and where is God calling us next? We know that God will call us to teach beauty. We know that God will call us to form men and women for and with others who find beauty in believing in others. We know that God is going to say, preach hope, to call us to hope to a world that's hopeless. And we have a great way to start that, by being struck by something brand new for Xavier. Let us pause for a moment now, I'll sit down and be quiet, and ask God to give us the beauty of wisdom to guide us to guide us to see the beauty of the world, the beauty of people, the beauty of culture, the beauty of people who respond to God's call, and the beauty to see things anew. Let us stand now. 
Reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Let us call on God's blessing so that we may come to know and to follow in our lives all that is true and all that is right and all that is just. Thank you, Father Kaiser, for pointing us to beauty and hope. Our response is, merciful God, hear our prayer. For our president, Dr. Colleen Hanich, that in the spirit of St. Ignatius, she will lead us to see all things new in Christ and to never tire in our commitment to grow in wisdom, gratitude, and generosity. We pray, merciful God, our prayer. For our board of trustees and our university administrators, that each individual would use their unique gifts, insights, and experiences to expand and enhance our dedication to education for personal and social transformation. We pray. for our entire Xavier community and family, extending from our students, faculty, and staff to our alumni, friends, and prospective students. We ask to see ourselves as equal and co-responsible partners in mission, creatively and collaboratively serving as people for and with others on and beyond campus. We pray. As we cope with all that has been caused and exposed by the COVID-19 pandemic, and especially those grieving the loss of loved ones, we ask for the comfort and strength to be sources of consolation and solidarity, in particular for those who feel insignificant or invisible. We pray. In a time when so much is being demanded of us and so many feel stretched for thin, we ask for compassion and care, especially for those suffering from anxiety, depression, and social isolation. May we be agents of cura personalis, healing and restoration for all that we meet. We pray. In the face of so much distrust, division, we ask for the courage to be prophets who speak against disrespect, bias, exclusion, and all forms of injustice. May we learn to savor the goodness in and around us so that we can appreciate a world charged with the grandeur of God to be bridge builders and caretakers of our common home. We pray. May we respond to the Spirit of God as hopeful and joyful community whenever and wherever we are called, that we might extend the all-for-one and one-for-all spirit of this campus far beyond our borders, becoming ever more attentive and responsive to the needs around us, we pray. In this election season, when political polarization and suspicion of government undermine our democracy. We lift up those seeking and serving in public office, locally, nationally, and globally. We pray for their integrity, fortitude, and commitment to justice for all. May their public service inspire us more of us to invest in the work of building a more inclusive and equitable society. We pray. In this Ignatian year, we pray for Father Carl Kaiser, our new provincial, 
all members of the Society of Jesus, Pope Francis, and all leaders of the church. As the church begins a two-year process of dialogue and discernment, may we all respond to the Pope's call to build a listening church that leaves no one out and no one behind, a church that is a sacrament of God's tender and steadfast mercy poured out for all people. We pray. Kind and loving God, we are grateful and humbled that you have called us here today to seek beauty and to be beauty, to help people, to be there for one another. We, your holy people, come together this afternoon with all of our needs, those we have expressed, and those needs each one of us carries in our hearts. In your great love and mercy, hear and answer us, for we ask all these things through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our brother. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God. <clears throat> Kindly receive the gifts we offer you, O Lord, and bestow on our hearts the spirit of love and truth that strengthens St. Francis Xavier to radiate the light of the gospel to every nation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you sanctify, you would send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, loving God, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. 
and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Dennis our Bishop, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Ignatius, St. Francis Xavier, St. Robert Bellarmine, Venerable Catherine Macaulay, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us, one God creator whom he called Father, all of us brothers and sisters, let us pray as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith, the faith of the church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you. Let us find some way to share the peace of Christ with one another. Good idea.
Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only this your word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, kindle in our hearts the fire of love, which St. Francis Xavier intended, with which St. Francis Xavier intensely burned, so that we may be able to hand on the leaven of the kingdom to the whole human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, if, uh, Dr. Hanich, would you just step forward just a little bit, and then we're going to do a special blessing, and I will invite all those who are coming to do the blessing to come forward. Please join your hearts with ours in prayer, loving God, source of all wisdom and knowledge. We ask for your blessing on President Hanich and this entire campus, Xavier community, in this new era. Chapter 103 of the Holy Quran, The Declining Day. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. صدق الله العظيم. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. By the passage of time, indeed, humankind is in a state of loss, except for those who have faith, do good, and counsel each other to truth, and counsel each other to perseverance. Dr. Hanich, may your journey with us be one of courage, prophetic voice, and the willingness to stand for justice when the road doesn't seem easy. May you lead us to do good, speak the truth, and persevere for a just and more equitable world. May God bless you, Dr. Hanich, and the entire Xavier community with the guidance of the Spirit as we journey in solidarity through seasons of profound joy, prosperity, difficulty, and disappointment. May we follow the ways of the Spirit's paths of truth, love, compassion, and justice. Heavenly Father God, guide Dr. Hanich in leading us to stand with the oppressed. Be with us as we search for deeper understanding, unsatisfied by easy answers. Change our hearts, helping us grow as a community mindset as we build bridges with one another. Our sages taught, may the good works of your students be as precious to you as your own. The respect for your study partner as great as your respect for your teacher and the honor for your teacher as great as your honor for God. May the one who blessed the generations before us, Dr. Hanich, and may God, our greatest teacher, be with us as we grow in wisdom together. May the example of Jesus, who was close to those he served, who listened to the needs of the people, and who worked and preached for justice, guide you in your presidency. And we ask Almighty God to bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May you, Dr. Hanich, and all the members of Xavier family speak fearlessly with the Spirit of God, seeking knowledge and understanding of the things of this world until your journey finds its completion in the world to come. At this time, a bunch of, thank you. Uh, this time, a couple of thank yous. You know, we were talking about at the beginning of uh, when I arrived here, this is not my home, obviously, and Abby was giving me the directions, and we were talking about how this works, and I said, 
you know, mass is something we do all the time. Why is it always so hard to put it all together? So a lot of people came together to make this day happen. So I want to thank everybody, whoever you were and are, for making sure this all happened. I'd also like to thank the concert, gospel choirs, and soloists for the music that made it easy to pray to. Amen. Thank you. The Missioning Mass Reception Committee and the staffs of the Center for Faith and Justice and Bellarmine Chapel for the work it takes to bring this about. Thank you. I'd like to thank the parish for the use of this space and the whole campus for, the hospi for your hospitality. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Board of Trustees for hosting and for their work as we enter in this new era as a university. Thank you. And I'd like to thank Dr. Hanich for your willingness to serve, for your vocation to lead this university, um, for your leadership so far and all that is to come. Thank you. You're all welcome to a reception. I forgot where it was, but follow the crowd. I'm sure you'll get there. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is our joy. Let us go forth to love and to serve him.